in this video we're going to try and understand why it is that when you keep on adding all these terms all these terms all the way to all the way to infinity then then the whole series is equal to e to the power of x so in the past you would just accept this you would accept that if you if you sum up everything all the way to infinity then the whole series equals this you just accepted that in the past you don't really understand why in, in this video we, we we're going to try and understand why that's the case so we've seen this before we've seen this in the past so we've you've got your general um, you've got your 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 general formula uh so you've got your general function all the way up into n and then uh, and then you've got your remainder here you've got your remainder here and you've got lots more remainders out here so uh so if you take it from here all the way to n then that will become your your taylor polynomial and then you've got your remainder here you've got your remainder here you've got your remainder here or well, taylor's theorem says that you can uh, you can squeeze all these remainders here into one simple elegant block into this one into this one simple elegant block so the way we're going to try and understand why why that why why when you sum out all the way to infinity the whole thing here equals this the way we're going to do that is to keep track of this remainder we are going to try and keep track of this remainder we are going to try and show that the remainder tends to zero as n heads towards infinity remember n heading towards infinity means you are summing up this 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 you're summing up all so so n going all the way to infinity means you're summing up all these blocks all the way all the way to infinity so our aim here is to show is to show that the remainder our aim here is to show that this remainder here tends to zero as n heads towards infinity well if this tends to zero if the remainder tends to zero then uh, then your taylor taylor polynomial becomes your function because the re the remainder is uh tends to zero it becomes nothing so our aim here is to to keep track of this remainder here is to keep track of this remainder so let's start from the uh from the beginning so you've got e and then uh, all the way to n and then you've got your 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 next one and your next one and your next one and so on so let's let's uh, let's just look at this thing here so that's up to n so that's up to n and then you've got your remainder here you've got another remainder here you've got more remainders out here so taylor's theorem says that you can you can squeeze all these um, all these remainders here into one simple elegant block this block here so you can squeeze all these remainders into one so so up until now you you don't really understand why how this is possible how it is that you can squeeze all these into one simple block i'm just asking you to accept that you can do that um so so you can squeeze all these into one simple block here uh, and then and re remember this um re remember our series we we are centered this is a maclaurin series we are centered at zero so a here is zero uh, so so x take away zero becomes x so this thing here this thing here is x and then this is the same remember if you look at this series we are centered at zero this is a Maclaurin series if we're centered at somewhere else the series would look something like this x minus a and then plus x minus a squared or it will it will look something like this but because we are centered at zero then this thing here will this a here will be zero so so this is our remainder our remainder becomes uh becomes this okay so so now we um we need to we need to look at the we need to look at this block here we need to find the the n plus one uh, derivative of uh, of our function so start with our function here this is our function differentiate it it will be the same differentiate it again it will be the same differentiate it again it will be the same differentiate it again and it will be the same differentiate it again up to n it will be the same e to the power of x so so differentiate it n plus one times then it will still be the same so uh so this thing here um f um f of n plus one so when you when you differentiate it n plus one times um then then it then it, it, it becomes it becomes e it, it becomes e to the power of x but then you evaluate it at uh, at c so uh, remember c is an unknown 
at sea uh, somewhere within an interval. I will explain more of this in the next video. But um, but but evaluated at sea. So our our remainder then becomes this. Our our remainder becomes this because if you look at this, you know, if you look at this block here, differentiate it, differentiate it up into n. That will be e to the power of x. Differentiate it, the next one will be n plus one. So that will still be this. But then this is um, the n plus one derivative evaluated at c. So uh, so you would put c into here. So that will become this. So that will then take us to here. I will ex I will continue in the next video. I'm trying trying to elaborate more on this c. Okay.